you're strong. God, you are mighty to save. Lord, we thank you for sending your son and God and cross for us to pay the price of all of our sins. I just thank you again for each and every one of us having the opportunity just to be with us and love the Holy Spirit. We can start off our day and stay with you. And they were like, man, we're bumped out. They were kicking cans. 
down the road, you know, just kind of like, kind of just down and out, totes down and out. And, and they were just kind of like, what are we going to do now? Why? Why were they down and out? Well, because who they thought was the Savior was just crucified and tortured and died at the hands of the Roman oppressors. And these two guys were his followers. Can you imagine if you're a really good friend who you looked up to and you admired and you thought, man, this guy's done everything. This girl's done everything. And suddenly they were tortured and killed. And you're like, wow, what do I do now? Where do I go from here? This changes everything about me. Well, these two guys are walking down the road to Emmaus and they're like trying to figure out what do we do next? This guy who we thought was going to throw off the Romans and, and conquer the Romans and save us, he just died at the hands of the Romans willfully. He just gave up his life. What do we do now? I guess we've got to find a new guy. Well, they're walking and they're just kind of bumped out and they're talking to each other. And suddenly this third guy kind of walks up behind them and he's like, hey guys, how's it going? Can I join you on your walk to Emmaus? And they're like, sure. And he's like, well, why are you guys all bummed out? Why are you super sad looking? And they're like, they're looking at each other like, does this guy not realize what just happened? The best candidate, the most likely candidate for the Savior of Israel, he was just crucified, he was nailed to a cross and, and, and tortured and died. And we have no hope now. And so they explain that to him, and he's like, well, don't you realize that's what's supposed to happen? And they're like, what? He's supposed to die and be tortured and, and be nailed to a cross? What are you even talking about? And he's like, yeah, it says it in the scriptures. Now we know they didn't have a New Testament like we have today. They just have the Old Testament. Where does it say that in the scriptures? And they're like, you got to show us this in your Bible. So, you know, they're walking down this road. It's, it's, a, it's a long journey. It's a long walk to Emmaus. And so he's just kind of pulling out these verses from the Old Testament, showing them. And I've always wondered, like, I'd love to kind of just, like, be a fly on the wall and kind of wonder, like, what verses they could pull out and what he showed them. Because by the time they made it to Emmaus, they were, like, convinced. They were like, oh, yeah, he was supposed to die. He was supposed to be tortured. He was supposed to be nailed to a cross by the Romans. So what did he show them? One of the things, one of the many things I think he showed them was his name. It's really interesting. His name is all throughout the Old Testament. But we just can't see it because we're not very familiar with his original name. So go to the next slide for me. So this was the original name of Jesus. And I'm going to talk about how we went from this to Jesus. Can anybody read that? Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah, you can see it in English. You can just read it in English. But that's what it would look like in Hebrew, okay? See those little Hebrew letters? That's really weird. Four Hebrew letters. But that's what, how he would have written his name. That's what we have, how he would have seen his name. But what's cool about that is it's all throughout the Bible. But first, before we get into that, I want to talk to you about how do we go from calling him Yeshua? How, do, how, do, how did he go from his own mother calling him? Anybody see The Passion of the Christ? That movie that came out years ago, Mel Gibson? Yeah, there's a scene in there where, uh, where um, Mary is calling to Jesus, and she's like, he's out there building a table, and he's like sanding it down and making it stuff. And she's like making a meal, and she's like, please get here and eat. And she's like, Yeshua, Yeshua. And he's ignoring her or something, but he's just super into building the table. And she's like, Yeshua. And finally, she just goes out there and kind of like drags him inside to get a meal. Well, that's what she was calling him. So how do we go from that to Jesus? Let's go to the next slide. What was interesting is um, the, the, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> the New Testament was written down in a language called Greek. Can you guys say Greek? Yeah. And so, yeah, Jesus and his followers, they would have spoken either Aramaic, Greek, or Hebrew. Kind of a hodgepodge. Like, we have a lot of languages in America, don't we? Like, we you hear people speaking Creole and Spanish and English. Same thing in Israel in the first century. You heard a lot of different languages going on. Well, they had to write the New Testament down in Greek because a lot of people who wanted to read the New Testament were Greek speakers. So naturally, they had to figure out, okay, well, how do we write the Hebrew name Yeshua in Greek? And so they had a problem because all dude names in Greek, if you were a dude, it'd be weird if your name didn't end in an OS or a US. If you didn't have that ending on your name, it'd be like if you were a dude and someone called you like Samantha. Wouldn't that be weird? But you know, we have like dude names in English, right? Like John, Richard, Bobby. Good dude names, right? Well, Yeshua in the Greek language wasn't a good dude name. So they had to kind of tweak it a little bit to make it to make it a dude name, all right? So they had to add two letters at the end, like Titus, or uh, Justice, or Lucas, you know, Lucas. It's a good Greek name, get a good Greek dude name. John, pat you on the back, pat your mom on the back, good name. All right, so they had to figure out how do we turn Yeshua into a good dude Greek name, add an OS or a US name. So they made it Yeshua's, 
Yeshua. So if you're like reading Greek and you're reading the New Testament, you would see, okay, this is a dude named Yeshua. He was a guy. He was a girl. All right. So they had another problem. They had not only to add the OS with the US at the end, they had to figure out, they didn't, in the Greek language, they didn't have the sh, sh sound, the SH, sh, sh. Everyone go, shh, shh. Yeah, so if you were, if you were a Greek, you wouldn't make a good teacher, would you? No, because you would be like, shh, shh, shh. Oh, this isn't working. Why is it not working? Shh. Be quiet. Shh. And they just laughed. I'm just kidding. I don't know about that. I'll be true. They wouldn't make a teacher. But they didn't have the SH sound in, like, Yeshua, Yeshua. So they had to figure out, what do we do with that? So they just softened it to Yasuas. Yasuas, everyone say Yasuas. You see how it's kind of changing a little bit here? They had a third problem in the Greek language. They didn't have a ya ya sound. Everyone go, ya. Yeah. yeah, they didn't have that. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have that. So they made it kind of this it, it, is isus. So you see how they kind of morphed a little bit? They made it isus. Isus. Everyone say isus. Yeah. So that's kind of what his name became in the Greek, in the Greek language. But do we speak Greek? No, what do we speak? Mostly English. Yeah, our Bible is mostly English, yeah. So go one more slide. So it went from Hebrew to Greek, and then into English. If you read a Bible from like the 1600s, like the King James Bible from the 1600s, it would have his name looking like that. Isn't that weird? There was no J back then. The letter J is kind of a new letter in our alphabet. Do you know that? It's only about four to five hundred years old. So they would say in the 1600s, they would say, Isus. Everyone say, Isus. So you see how we're getting there? We're getting close, right? We're getting close. We're almost to, almost to Jesus. So in the 1611 King James, that's how they would read his name. It's like, Isus. Isus. All right? And then this letter J came along. This letter J came along. And they turned the is, the is sound to uh, ju, 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 everyone say ju. Yeah, they made it kind of a harder, like we, 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 we came up with this letter J. And so it, then it turned into, you go to the next slide, it turned into Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How many speak Spanish in here? How, many, how would you say his name in Spanish? Jesus, Jesus. You see how it's kind of closer to the original, Jesus? And now we say, in English we say Jesus or Jesus, right? Interesting. So probably a couple hundred years ago, you would have heard people say Jesus, and then we kind of turned it into Jesus. Isn't that interesting? A little history lesson for you. But like I said, I'm going to say it again. The name Jesus is completely fine. He knows that you're talking to him. Okay. So don't let this discourage you from calling him Jesus. He knows that because he's called different things in so many different languages all around the world. But he knows what your heart is intending to pray to or to call out. He knows that. Okay. So don't let this discourage you from calling him Jesus. It's totally fine. He knows his name in all those different languages. But I think it's cool to know what did he actually answer to from his mother. When his mother would say, Yeshua, he would answer, right? And he might have answered to Jesus, but she didn't really call him Jesus at the time. So kind of quick history lesson. So, go over side, please. So we went from Yeshua to Jesus. So now you know kind of the evolution. I didn't learn this all in college, guys. So you're really good with your nose now. I didn't know the history, why we call him Jesus now until I was like 20 years old. So... Good job. All right, go to the next slide. So what does Yeshua mean? Because in, in, in English, does Jesus really mean anything? We don't really have like a meaning for Jesus. What we did is we took Yeshua, which does mean something in the Hebrew language, and we kind of made it our compatible with our language. But in, if you went up to a Hebrew-speaking Israeli today who spoke Hebrew as a native language, and you said Yeshua, do you know what would come to mind? I'll tell you what would come to mind. Let's pretend, everyone close your eyes. This horrible army came into your village, and they were a nasty, just band of barbarians. And they, they would kill all the, the women and the children, and they would take some people captive to, to hold them as slaves. And so you were taken captive and taken back to their city that was guarded by gates. Okay, these huge walls, these huge gates, and you were locked in this dungeon, this cage. And people were pointing their fingers at you and laughing and spitting at you and throwing things at you for days and days and days. And like, you just thought that was, that was the rest of your life. You just thought, I'm going to be here the rest of my life. I'm going to be a slave. I'm going to have to work for these people. So if you said Yeshua, you pictured someone coming into that city that you were locked in, storming the gates of that city with this massive army, busting down the gates, finding you, busting you out of that cage and saying, come with me. 
You're not going to be in the city any longer. That's Yeshua. That's, that's, that is deliverance, right? Go to the next slide. I want you to turn. Is that the last slide? Go to the next slide. Okay, now, with your eyes closed, I want you to picture that you're a fisherman on a boat. Okay? You're on this big, open lake. Huge lake where you can't see any of the shoreline around you, okay? And suddenly, out of nowhere, this huge storm comes. And it's blowing your boat all around and tossing it around. The waves are lapping up over the sides. And your boat is filling up with water. And you're like, oh gosh, I'm going to die. We're all going to die in this boat. We're going down. I don't know how to swim. My wife and kids are going to have to fend for themselves. They're not going to have a father. They're not going to have a mother. Man, what are we going to do? And you're crying out. You just know that you're going to die. But suddenly someone steps in and they talk to the wind and the waves and say, stop. Be silent. That is Yeshua. Go to the next slide. We're going to do one more. <laughs> Pretend that you have this disease that is eating the flesh off of your body. And this disease is like, just going to, eventually it's going to kill you. You have this terminal disease that's going to kill you. Eventually all your fingers are going to fall off. And your nose is going to fall off your face because it's just rotting off. And all the flesh is just falling off of you. It's called leprosy. Pretend for a second that you have this disease. And you're outside the city, and you have to beg for everything that you have. You have to beg. And, you, and when someone comes up close to you, you have to yell, unclean, unclean, don't come near me. And someone has to throw money at you, or someone has to throw food at you. They can't come near you. Just imagine for a second if that was you. How terrible would that be? But one day, someone walks up and they touch you out of nowhere. And you look down at your hands, and that disease is gone. And you look, you look in a mirror, or you look down, and, and suddenly there, there, there's no sores on your skin anymore. And you realize, I am clean. What just happened? That is Yeshua. What do all those stories have in common, guys? Someone is saved from certain death, right? In every single one of those stories, someone is saved without the someone doing anything to help. So you guys were saved in each and every one of those stories without helping yourself whatsoever, right? Someone just swooped in and saved you, right? That is Yeshua. Yeshua, in the Hebrew language, if you walked up to an Israeli today and you looked at them and said, Yeshua, their mind would think deliverance or salvation or redemption from something that meant death. Go to the next slide. Matthew 16, 18, it says, I, and I tell you, you are the rock, you're Peter. And on this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of that terrible, terrible city where you were held captive for all your life, and you thought you were going to be there all your life, the gates of that city, hell, will not prevail. They're not going to be able to withstand the onslaught of my army. Go to the next slide. And on that day, when evening came, he said to them, let us go across the other side of the sea. And other boats were there with them, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so the boat was already filling. The boat was filled with water. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him up and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke and rebuked the wind and said, Peace, be still, and the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey his voice? Some of you today are in that boat. You're in that city where you have that illness. Go to the next slide. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. Behold, a leper, a person with the fingers falling off and the nose falling off, and he's wrapped in cloth and he's unclean. The leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, can you make me clean? And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was gone. Some of you right now, you're in that, you're in that city. There's no hope. You think there's no hope. Some of you right now are in that boat, and you're like, I'm going to drown. It feels like my family is just like imploding around me. It feels like my parents' divorce that I'm going through right now is just, it's all my fault, and I just have no hope. I don't know what I'm living for. Or some of you have that illness, and you're like, man, I can't stop looking at those pictures on the internet. What am I going to do? I just feel so dirty after it. But guess what? Jesus 
is your salvation. He can touch you and just say, be clean. Or he can storm those gates of that situation in your home and say, you know what? No, there is hope. Come with me. Or he can talk to the wind and waves that is the chaos of, of everything going on in your life and say, calm yourself. I'm here with you. You might not know it. I'm asleep in the stern, but I'm here with you. Don't be afraid. I got this. Go the next time. So what I want to do now, I want to pull out some of the verses that I think those two dudes on the road to Emmaus were, were shown, okay? We're going to go through about five verses, and then we'll be done. Exodus 14, 13 through 14. So this is like Jesus' name in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew Bible. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the Yeshua, the salvation. If you were to read that in Hebrew, you would see the name of Jesus right there. Yeshua, of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today shall you never see again. And the Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is be silent. Sometimes when you're in a fight, when you're in a battle and you have a trial, right now you're really discouraged because maybe you're breaking up with somebody or your parents are breaking up or whatever the case may be. You're like, man, what is this storm is just raging around me? Just be silent. And just cry out to him. First Chronicles 16, 23, 24 says, Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of his salvation, his Yeshua, his Jesus. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Matthew 1, 21. You will call his name Yeshua because he will Yeshua, his people. He will save his people. So when the angel Gabriel was speaking to Mary, she said, he said to her, you're going to call his name Salvation, because he's going to be salvation. Makes sense, right? Kind of cool. Go to the next slide. This is probably one of the coolest passages in the Bible. I just love this, this passage. Can someone at uh, the front row turn, turn to Luke chapter 20? Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 32. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to tell the story while you're turning there. So there's this old guy named Simeon. Probably looked like that. He was really old. And he prayed a prayer one day when he was young. He said, God, don't let me die until I see your Messiah, until I see Israel saved. And you come here. It's like, he said, don't let me die. I don't want to die until I see your salvation, until I see your Messiah come. And so he would be at the temple and he'd be praying. He'd be praying every day in the temple because he thought, maybe today is going to be the day that I see him. Maybe today is the day that I see the salvation, that I see the Yeshua. And finally, one day comes along is your best. This, this one day comes and, and so Mary and, and, and Joseph, they take Jesus up to the temple in Jerusalem and they're there to dedicate him in the temple. And this Simeon guy, this old guy, most times we can't freak out, this, this old guy came up to you and your baby, but this was, a, this was a really righteous guy, right? And he was there in the temple praying every day. He was known by everyone praying. And he came up and he took the baby let me find the verse here. And he says, he was moved by the Spirit, and he went into the temple courts. And when the parents, Mary and Joseph, brought the child to, uh, in, in the child Jesus to him, Simeon took him in, the, in his arms, and he says this, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss, you may let your servant die in peace. Why? For my eyes have seen your salvation. My eyes have seen your Yeshua named Yeshua. And he says this, which you prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light of revelation to all the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Isn't that a beautiful story? He's like, I'm going to die. I've seen him. I've seen the baby. I've seen the salvation. I know that everything's going to be okay at this point. Guys, right now, I promise, if you think you're in the midst of a storm, if you think you're captured by the city, and you're a slave to something, just trust in your salvation. Trust in Jesus. Trust in Yeshua. He'll be there for you. He'll care for you, okay? Let's all close our eyes. I just want to encourage you. You know, I told you, told you about Yeshua. I told you about his name was Yeshua, but again, there's nothing wrong with calling him Jesus. If that, is, if that is what you're used to, go for it. 
Father, we thank you for these bright young children that you've created in your image and that you have a specific plan and purpose for their life. Father, we declare you king over our lives right now. And we know that if we trust in your salvation, that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the army that you chase us down with. You pursue us to, to redeem us and to bring us back out of slavery. And Father, we know that if we're in the midst of a storm, a boat that we know is just going to go down and sink down, we're going to drown, that you can just speak to that storm. Father, if we're struck with this illness, this addiction, or this sin that we just keep doing over and over, and we don't know why, that we know that you can reach down and you can say, be clean. God, I each and every one of my students have different problems, have different trials, or different sources of chaos and confusion right now. But speak to their lives right now. Reach down and touch them and know that they can be made clean. God, we ask that you just work in and through always this Christian Academy today. And we just dedicate this day back to you. Help us to speak life into people and not speak death. Help us to speak salvation to people who don't know him yet. We pray all of these things in your son's name. Amen. So I'm going to give you a little quiz here. What was the guy's name in the temple who took Jesus and Saw an angel right there. Simeon. Catch. All right, watch out, guys. Heads up. Shoot. Whoa, we catch. Wow. That's actually pretty impressive. We should take that on the road. All right. Here's another, here's another quiz. What was, the, what was the name of the town the two dudes were walking to? Ooh, that's close. I'm going to go with. Is it Azalea? Azalea. Azalea, yeah. What's the name? Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go with you. No. I saw Lucas's hand up really fast. What is it? Emmaus. Emmaus. See, that's a good Greek dude name, isn't it? Emmaus. You should name your son that. All right, one more. We've got one more. You're like, what are these things? What are they? Solid gold bars. Yeah. Yeah. Cash and everything. I'm buy these three things for you today. I'm um, thinking about a quiz question. How many Hebrew letters? Were in the name of Jesus. I saw Julius. Four. Four. Can you name them? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Guys, you are dismissed. Go to the teachers. Have a good day.